Thanks for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. 19th day of March, 2022. I'm David Percy. Up first, uh, tomorrow, 7.33 a.m. is the uh, vernal equinox, meaning that uh, spring begins tomorrow, and therefore Monday will be the first full day of spring for 2022. And from there, taking a look at hazardous weather, We've got a uh, wind chill advisory out uh, for tonight for the eastern North Slope, Eastern Brooks Range area. And that's for uh, wind chills to 50 degrees below zero. And then for the eastern Arctic coast, Eastern Beaufort Sea coast there, Prudhoe Bay and uh, <clears throat> Dead Horse over to Kaktovik Barter Island. Wind chill advisory out there until noon on Sunday for wind chills to 55 degrees below zero. And that's all the watches, warnings, advisors around the state going to satellite imagery. You can see a kind of a pinwheel circulation there in the southern Gulf of Alaska, east of Kodiak, that slowly appears to be losing its clouds through as the frame rolls on there. Uh, bands of snow moving across Kodiak Island were heavier this morning, lightened up with some breaks in the clouds during the midday hours and into the afternoon. Back out to the west, cold air continues to come southward across the central and eastern Bering Sea with high pressure, uh, trying to hold but beginning to give way a little bit there as the next band of moisture moves into the northwest Bering Sea. But uh, holding pretty well there with uh, cold air down to the Pribilof Islands and Adak and Atka, snowfall levels right down to sea level, snow blowing snow and strong winds continuing over the eastern Aleutians Alaska Peninsula today and along the southwest coast. Lighter winds to the north, St. Lawrence Island, and over the northwest interior. Variable mid and high level clouds uh, over the central and southeast part of the state. There were some areas of snow, pretty light snow conditions, heaviest along the North Gulf Coast, and even those amounts weren't all that great. Kodiak picked up anywhere from one to three inches of snow overnight and into uh, this morning. There, that uh, tapering off, becoming pretty wet, uh, whatever's continuing there, more of a snow shower condition this afternoon with the uh, northwest winds diminishing. Back to the west in the colder air, strong northwest winds gusting to 60 miles an hour. Peak wind gusts recorded at Dutch Harbor, Unalaska, King Cove, and Nikolski. In that tighter gradient there between the strong high out to the west, centered over the western Aleutians and covering the western Bering Sea and then the low in the Gulf. Arctic high ridging over the north slope there allowed temperatures to drop into the uh, mid minus 30s below zero around Umiat Airfield this morning and uh, be another cold below zero morning tomorrow morning as well and winds along the southwest coast gusting anywhere from 40 to 45 miles per hour. Yukon Delta, Cuscombe Delta coast down to Cape Nuanam. Inland areas seeing gusting anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour and uh, extending into the north central interior, but lighter winds down to the south, areas of light snow over the Copper River Basin. Yakutat picked up about an inch of snow today, otherwise uh, rain showers over the Panhandle. Cloak had about two-tenths of an inch of rainfall. And snow got as far north as Eagle, they picked up about an inch of snow. Also Delta Junction had an inch or less, around half inch there falling. And that's about it as far as the precipitation goes for tonight. That area of uh, light snow and snow showers will continue over the east side into the Copper River Basin, slowly start to diminish and become even lighter than what it is. And periods of light rain and snow for the Panhandle, North Gulf Coast, more of a showery condition down into Kodiak Island uh, with lighter winds, staying a little breezy there, but not uh, as strong as it had been. Look for uh, gusty winds, snow blowing snow to continue, maybe another inch of snow on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, but improving for the eastern Aleutians, high pressure holding over the Bering Sea. Some moisture trying to slip up over the top of that ridge, but dissipating as it moves through the ridge axis. Cold high pressure over the north slope again tonight, lows 25 to 40 below up that way, and uh, below zero right down into the Yukon Delta, St. Lawrence Island area. 
Nunavak Island as well, and uh, pretty chilly over the central interior. Even in the uh, snow cloud cover areas there, but it'll be milder from the North Gulf Coast. And for Sunday, mostly clear, cold weather. Northern, western part of the state, Bering Sea, pretty nice conditions there. Scattered, isolated, or scattered snow showers start to become isolated for the Fox Islands in the afternoon and uh, a little bit slower improving there for the Alaska Peninsula. Both uh, snowfall and winds slowly coming down and uh, be a little breezy over southern Alaska, but a light winds up to the north. The next front pushes wind, increasing wind and rain to the central and southern part of the southeast coast in the afternoon as that begins to approach. Otherwise, areas of light rain or rain and snow showers for the North Gulf Coast. And for Monday, High pressure dominating much of interior Alaska still, especially early on, still a chance of some snow showers from Eagle down into Northway Toke, central eastern Copper River Basin, maybe as far west as uh, Prince William Sound, the Chugach Mountains, but whatever is lingering there will be quite light and should pretty much end by the afternoon hours, but it'll stay uh, unsettled for the North Gulf Coast and Panhandle there with continued east and southeast flow next system farther to the south and then out west, uh, Frontal boundary pushing uh, increasing wind, rain, and snow into the western Aleutian spreading into Adak and Atka in the afternoon, but looks pretty good. Mostly clear skies for the uh, Fox Islands, and again, mostly sunny over much of interior Alaska. Lows for tonight, uh, upper 20s, lower 30s for the Panhandle. Around 10 for the Copper River Basin in the 20s, south central Alaska. Mid 30s, Kodiak Islands will stay above freezing there. Single numbers in Bristol Bay, below zero from the central interior. Coldest over the north slope. Temperatures anywhere from 25 to maybe as cold as 40 below zero, but that'll be the exception. Lows about 12 for the Primaloffs. Upper 20s, lower 30s for the Aleutians. Upper teens for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs tomorrow. Staying below freezing west and north of the Alaska Range and below zero from the Brooks Range out to the Arctic Coast. Otherwise, 35 to 40 south central Alaska and into the uh, mid 40s southern Panhandle, mid 30s up to the north near 40 for Yakutat, upper 20s Alaska Peninsula, upper 30s Kodiak Island. A little warmer for the Perbaloff size in the lower 20s and mid to upper 30s for the Aleutians. And for the lows on Monday morning, down to uh, 5 to 15 below central interior. McGrath, Nikolai about 6 below, but Sleep, Mute, Sparavon around 4 above. Single numbers though across the Cuscoam Delta. Yukon Delta a little below zero. And then uh, 25 or 20 to 35 below for the north slope in the Arctic coast. Looking at highs, Monday afternoon, staying below zero for the Arctic coast and into the north slope of the Brooks Range rising above zero. Kotzebue high right around zero, but 20 for Nome in the teens through the central interior into the upper Tanana Valley area, but north way in token, the lower 20s, mid 30s there for the uh, Copper River Basin. Again, mid to upper 30s, south central Alaska to near 40 for Homer and Port Mola, Seldovia area. Same thing for Kodiak, upper 20s, the lower 30s for the Alaska Peninsula. Out uh, farther west, uh, pushing up near 40 now for the Aleutians, for Adak, and mid 20s for the Perbaloffs. Otherwise, for the southeast coast, lower 40s to the north, mid to upper 40s down toward Dixon entrance. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And moving on to flying weather. Marginal VFR, north slope, Arctic coast, so VFR, most of the interior, v, or western central interior VFR, VFR into the northern Bering Sea, into the Permalofs, down to the central Aleutians, marginal VFR, shimmy in at two. Fox Islands to Alaska Peninsula. Kodiak Island, mostly marginal. That extends up across western Prince William Sound, maybe into Resurrection Bay to uh, Portage, Whittier, and the western Copper River Basin, Talkeetna's, northern Susitna Valley. Western Alaska Range up into the uh, mid and upper Tanah Valley, 40 mile country. Panhandle VFR, marginal VFR, just south of Yakutat for the afternoon. Again, good VFR, losing it on the north slope there, or losing the marginal VFR. So VFR from the Arctic Ocean all the way down to the Alaska Range, marginal VFR along the mountains there to the Talkeetnas, uh, possibly in the northern Prince William Sound, but uh, becoming VFR for Prince Le or turning an arm in the Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak becoming VFR, Bristol Base, marginal VFR, Alaska Peninsula, 
Another band there across Atka Island, just west of the Pribilofs to St. Matthew Island. IFR pushing into Shimmy and Atu with that next uh, storm system out toward Kamchatka Peninsula. And also IFR swinging up into the southern southeast coast. And that area of IFR uh, pushes northward all the way to uh, Skagway, at least, uh, covering Linkadaw Glacier Bay southward, becoming marginal VFR Prince Wales Island over toward Metlakatla and Annette with good VFR, much of interior Alaska and the Bering Sea, some spotty areas of marginal VFR, Koyukuk, Kobuk Valley, possibly down to the Yukon River there, and then Eagle into the uh, mountains north of Fairbanks, <coughs> some marginal VFR, Kodiak Island, the Aleutian Range, Alaska Peninsula to Unalaska Island, VFR, Unmak Island westward, then band of IFR slowly edging eastward there to uh, Kiska Island and marginal to Amchitka, but the northern Bering Sea looking good. And then for Monday afternoon, that band of IFR pushes to ADAC, otherwise marginal VFR to Atka. Stays VFR for the Pribilofs, all of the eastern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, Chukchi Sea. Interior Alaska, good VFR, even Kodiak Island, some marginal VFR around Sitkanak, but uh, pretty good conditions there. Marginal VFR for the southeast coast. Band of IFR staying mostly off the coast there. Uh, maybe some IFR lingering over toward Misty Fjords. Otherwise looking pretty good. Manitouvik, VFR, Adigan, same forecast tomorrow. Good VFR day there. Lake Clark and Merrill, occasional marginal VFR at times throughout the entire day. Occasionally marginal for rainy as well. Windy, occasional marginal VFR. Isabel, occasionally marginal. Same forecast for Tanita and Mentasta. Both uh, look kind of marginal tomorrow. Portage starting out marginal, becoming VFR in the afternoon. Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels at the surface tomorrow morning, uh, south of the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, across Kodiak Island, just south of the North Gulf Coast, cutting across the central and southern panhandle. And icing, considerable moderate, uh, mostly south of the panhandle, pushing into the Queen Charlottes with uh, isolated moderate into the central and southern southeast coast. And that area extends westward across the Gulf of Alaska to Prince William Sound, southern Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island. And looking at the uh, jet stream, northerlies, again, strong upper ridge there over the western bearing. So northerlies coming down across St. Lawrence Island up to 105 knots there right over the Pribilofs down to Atka Island. And uh, complex upper low system over the interior and in Gulf of Alaska makes for light wind flow there. And that holds the jet stream to the south of even the Queen Charlottes. And for 9,000 feet, again, ridging out over the Bering Sea central areas, Otherwise, 45 to 55 knot north to northeast winds across uh, eastern Aleutians, diminishing as you head north there. Pretty light wind flow across interior Alaska. A little breezy for Kodiak Island. Northeasterlies maybe up to 30 knots, not too bad. And again, the strongest wind south of the Panhandle. And 3,000 feet, 65 knotters showing up around Dixon Entrance now. Northeast 40, Kodiak Island. And as far as turbulence goes, look for moderate chop, uh, southern coast of the Panhandle, Prince of Wales Island, Alaska Peninsula, otherwise light to isolated moderate chop across the southern interior. cadets and welcome to the Okeanos Explorer. I'm Debbie and I'm an ocean explorer. I work for NOAA which stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Together with many other people I work on this ship and we explore the deep sea. How do we do that? Let's go find out. 
Octonauts, let's do this. Yow! The pressure in the ocean is so great, humans can't go there. So we send a special robot. Octocadets, meet Deep Discover, our special robot for ocean exploration. And this is Chris. He works with Deep Discover. Hi, Chris. Hey, Debbie. Can you tell us about what Deep Discover does? Sure. So this is Deep Discover, and today we're going to take Deep, Deep Discover up to four miles down to the ocean floor so you can see what Deep Discover sees. And how do we do that? We do that by using these powerful cameras and powerful lights. That's neat. And what is that? And this is our manipulator arm, and we use this arm to take biological and geological samples that we store up front in these boxes and we, so that we can bring them to the surface so scientists can analyze them. Wow, isn't that cool, Octocadets? Wow! wow. Mm. Now that we know more about the special robot that explores the sea floor, let's find out more about the ship. Octocadets, let's do this. Now let's find out what we do with D2's video. Come along. This is the control room. A lot of things about D2 happen in here. Behind me, you see the pilots. They steer D2 on the sea floor. And over here we have scientists. Hi, Steve and Stacy. Hi, this is Steve and I'm Stacy and we are marine biologists. Can you tell us about the work you do here? We actually look at the videos collected by the robots and we try to identify organisms along with other scientists on the shore. What are you looking at right now? We're actually looking at a sea star. That's so awesome, thank you. Now let's look at how we make maps of the sea floor. Excellent, Quasi. A good map helps you to get to places you've never been. We also have a scientist on board who makes maps of the sea floor. Hi, Derek. Hi, Debbie. Can you tell us about your work? Sure. My job on the ship is to make maps of the ocean floor. We do this by sending sound from the bottom of the ship. It echoes off the seafloor and comes back to the ship. And then from that, we can make maps like this. So this is what it would look like if you were able to drain the water out of the ocean and actually see what the landscape looked like down there. Uh, we use these maps to give the vehicles a place to dive and they explore further, just like octonauts do. Status report, Dashi. We're right on course, Captain. So earlier we learned that D2 picks things up from the seafloor with his manipulator arm. Let's find out what we do with those samples. This is the wet lab and Megan spends a lot of time here. Megan, can you tell us about your work? I am the sample data manager, so when the ROV comes up, we go out and we collect the samples from the ROV and we bring them in here. And we try to record as much information about them as possible, everything from the details about what they look like to the environment conditions where they were found. How cold was it, for example? Then we come in and we take imagery using this microscope and we take pictures using this camera as well. And then after we get all the pictures taken and we're ready, we prepare them for shipping to other scientists and museums so more science can be done, such as the squat lobster, this cup coral as well. And what is that? This is a piece of coral, or several pieces of coral, that we think might actually be a new species. So we are going to send it out for a comparison to existing species to see if we discovered something new. Wow, you have a really cool job. Thank you. Fascinating. I've read about this, but I've never actually seen it. An important part of how we explore the ocean is keeping in touch with scientists and Arctic cadets on shore. Let's go see how we do that. Rosemary, can you tell the Arctic cadets a little about what that dish does? Sure. My name is Lieutenant Rosemary Abbott. I'm the operations officer aboard the Okeanos Explorer, and that is our VSAT. It stands for Very Small Aperture Terminal, and inside that satellite dome is a very powerful dish antenna that allows us to communicate with shore and share video in real time. The technology is called telepresence. Whoa, that is so interesting. Thank you, Rosemary. Now I'm getting really hungry. Let's go to the kitchen and talk about food. This is the ship's kitchen, also known as the galley. And this is Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Debbie. Michael is the chief steward on this ship, and he keeps 49 people fit for three weeks at a time. Michael, how do you do that? Uh, with a lot of care and with the help of three crew members, I have myself, the chief steward, a chief cook, and a second cook. 
and we uh, just do it with a lot of love and care and make sure that everybody's happy and well fed. We use up to 150 dozen eggs per trip, up to a hundred gallons of milk, uh, a lot of veggies and fruits, a lot of snacks. Everybody's very pleased with what we usually put out. Uh, we also uh, make sure that we do it in a loving way, in a sanitary way, in a safe way that keeps everybody from getting any tummy aches. <laughs> I'm about to enter the ship's fridge. It's like the Octopods' headquarters. Octonauts to the HQ. Ahoy, Captain. Ahoy, Debbie. Hi, Eric. Hello. Octo Cadets, meet Eric Johnson, the commander of the ship. Eric, can you tell us about what you do up here? Absolutely. Hello, Octa Cadets. My name's Eric Johnson. I'm an O-Corps officer, and I'm the captain of the Okeanos Explorer. Welcome to my office. This is where we drive the ship. This is where we control the operations. We run the propellers that are underneath us in the back to the wheel up here at the front, which is where we steer. Uh, it's a pretty cool job. It's very exciting, and it's pretty beautiful around here as well. So, Octa Cadets, now you know a little bit about the ship and how we explore the deep sea. I hope you enjoyed our time together. I'll see you next time. Debbie, safety first. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Coastal water forecast, gale warning, south coast of the Panhandle. East-southeast winds, 35 to 40 knots. He's around 15 feet. Small craft advisories for the north coast there for east to southeast winds at 30 knots. And then northern inner channels, north winds 20 knots, four foot seas. Stevens Passage, east winds 20 knots with higher gusts, seas four feet. And small craft advisors for Clarence Strait for southeast winds 25 to 35 knots with 11 foot seas. And for the outlook for Monday, gale warnings on the north coast now, east southeast winds 35 knots, and small craft advisors for the south coast or southeasterlies at 30 knots. Small craft advisors continue for Clarence Strait, southeast 25 and east at 20 for Stevens Passage, northern inner channels. East winds of 15 knots, three foot seas. Northeast winds 15 knots, Prince William Sound with pretty slight seas. Otherwise, small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast, east northeast, 25 to 30 knots. Small craft advisories also for the Barren Islands, northeast at 30 knots with 11 foot seas. Cook Inlet, northerly winds 15 to 20 knots, seas four to six feet. 20 knot winds out of the north for Kamishak Bay. And for Monday, Prince William Sound, northeast winds 20 knots, seas at about 3 feet. Gale warnings for the north Gulf Coast, east-northeast winds 35 knots. And gales also out for the Barren Islands, for northerlies at 35 knots. Small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay as those northwest winds pick up to 30 knots, seas build to 9 feet. Small craft advisories, Southern Cook Inlet, north winds at 25 knots, otherwise north 20, north of the Forelands. Kodiak Island, small craft advisories for the day Sunday. Northerly is 25 to 30 knots. He's up to 11 feet. Gale warnings for the area, the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape. North winds 40 knots. And uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, small craft advisories. North winds at 30 knots and 20 knot northerly winds in the forecast for Bristol Bay. For Monday, small craft advisories, Kodiak Island, north to northwest, 25 to 30 knots. And north to northwest, 25 knot winds for the Alaska Peninsula, six to eight foot seas. Small craft advisories for Bristol Bay, north winds at 25 knots. For the Fox Islands, gale warnings, north winds, 30 to 40 knots for the day Sunday, seas uh, 12 to 16 feet. Small craft advisories for Adak and Atka, north winds, 25 to 30 knots. And then swinging around to the south from M for Amchitka Island at 15 knots. And then gale warnings, Amchitka to Shimia, south winds increasing to 40 knots. 
And uh, minimum gales for the area from Shimia to Kiska on Monday for southwest winds of 35 knots, 30 knots southerly winds out for the Amchitka Island area. Small crowd advisories for the Adak Gatka zones with uh, southeast winds of 25 knots. And for Unmac Island, north to northeast winds 20 to 25 knots. And Unalaska Island, north to northwest winds at 25 knots. Southwest coast, small craft advisory south of Nunavak Island for north winds at 30 knots. North 25 knot winds for the Pribilofs, west 15 for St. Matthew Island. Northwest winds at 20 knots for the Yukon Delta coast and northwest at 15 for St. Lawrence Island. Pretty light winds there from the northern Bering Sea and St. Lawrence Island area on Monday, north at 10 knots. Same thing for Norton Sound, north 15 for the Yukon Delta coast. Small craft advisories for the Cuscombe Delta coast, north winds at 25. Winds coming down to 15 knots, staying north there for the Pribilofs, and then southeast on the increase to 30 knots, mostly from uh, the area west of St. Matthew Island. Eastern Wolford Sea coast tomorrow, west winds 20 knots. Central coast, southwest at 15. And uh, southerlies at 10 knots for the west side, and a 10 knot wind from varying directions from Cape Beaufort to Wales. And uh, pretty light variable winds on Monday from Wales up, uh, including the western Arctic coast down to the Bering Strait, variable 5 to 10 knots, southeast to 10 knots for the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast. For tonight, high pressure, light winds, and temperatures back down to 25 to 35 below for the North Slope uh, Arctic coast into the Brooks Range. Below zero temperatures again tonight, the Yukon Delta, St. Lawrence Island, the Seward Peninsula. And uh, some lingering snow taking a long time to end there over the southeast interior, but uh, additional accumulations will be light. Rain and snow chances continue for the North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle. Snow and blowing snow continues uh, for the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. That starts gradually tapering off, especially for the Dutch Harbor area tomorrow afternoon for Sunday, and also diminishing snow over the south. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.